resisting bending failure of the teeth of a gear, as well as the pitting failure at the tooth surfaces, are two of the most common design parameters and selection criteria for gears and gear systems. For bending failure, this can happen either when the bending stress exceeds the yield strength, for cases we know as moderate use, or when it exceeds the bending endurance strength for most cases. A surface failure occurs when the surface stress, which we'll learn what it means in the next video, exceeds the surface endurance strength. Today, we will focus on the bending failure of the teeth. Even though the derivation of the Lewis bending equation seems to simplify the real geometry drastically, and even though Wilfred Lewis, the guy that introduced the equation, did it in 1892, the equation still remains the basis for most gear design today. We know that even though the force direction is constant, same as the line of action, which I've explained in a couple of videos before, links below, the force position varies as teeth come into contact and gears rotate. If we look at the tooth profile, we could place the force component around the tip of the tooth, kind of like for worst case scenario, and we could identify where the maximum moment will happen. We'll label that location as lowercase a. The thickness of the tooth at the base will be t, and the height, which we'll treat as a length, will be lowercase l. The reason we do this is because the tooth is going to be modeled as a rectangular cantilever beam. The cantilever beam will have a length L and a height T. The thickness or depth of the cantilever will be the face of the gear, which I mentioned before when saying that the variable capital F was going to be saved for this instead of using it for all the interaction forces. And the force that would cause the bending of this very simplified tooth would be the tangential force WT. The bending stress of the cantilever would be that of a rectangular beam with cross-section dimensions F and T, which would indicate that the distance from the neutral axis to the top or bottom, which is where the maximum stress is located, would be T over 2, and the second moment of area I would be base time height cubed over 12. The maximum moment along the cantilever beam would be at the wall and equal to WT times L. If we draw a line from where the forces are located to where the potential maximum stress occurs, and then we draw a perpendicular line to it, we form the shape of a triangle where we can identify the distance x. From similar triangles, from the top triangle, half of the thickness is the shorter side and L is the longer side. From the bottom triangle, x is the short side and t over 2 is the longer side. Solving for L, we find that the length of the cantilever in terms of this new variable x is t squared over 4x. Substituting it in the stress expression, we find the stress in terms of x, and if we multiply by the circular pitch, lowercase p, on the top and the bottom, and label y as 2x over 3p, we would get wt over fpy. The factor y is called the Lewis form factor, and since it depends on the circular pitch, which is the length of the arc from one tooth to the next, remember? And the distance x, which are both geometrical parameters of the tooth profile, the Lewis form factor can be found depending on the number of teeth for a given pressure angle. Although it was initially written in terms of the circular pitch, just like I mentioned in the first gears video, link below, at some point, we transitioned from the circular pitch, which makes sense as a real pitch, to diametral pitch or module, depending on the units we're using. For this reason, and if you remember what the differences between these are, we can use diametral pitch instead of the circular pitch, which is pi over circular pitch, and write the stress equation using capital P. If we now define capital Y as a modified Lewis form factor that is equal to lowercase y times pi, or 2x over 3 times the diametral pitch, we get that the stress is WT times diametral pitch over phase times capital Y, which is the Lewis form factor that we can find in common tables. The metric version of this equation would use the module, which is just the circular pitch without the pi in it. Starting again with the expression where we use lowercase y and the circular pitch lowercase p and replace p by m, we would still end up using a capital Y to take care of that extra pi. And the expression would be wt over fmy. You might notice here that we didn't end up using the radial force that is causing compression of the teeth. The bending of this quote-unquote cantilever causes tension on one side and compression on the other. The maximum normal stress would be higher at the compression side because the radial force is causing an additional compressive stress. However, just like we saw during the failure criteria for ductile materials videos, 
Links below. We worry more about tension than compression, as for some materials the compression strength is higher. If we look at the side of the cantilever that is under tension, the compressive stress caused by the radial force would only decrease the magnitude of the normal stress. So if anything, this just helps our calculations by adding an extra safety component, since we're using the higher value to calculate the bending stress. This stress expression will be affected by many parameters of the operation of the gears, like the dynamic effects, geometry effects, size factors, surface factors, load distribution factors, hardness ratio factors, etc. Since we're not going to cover them all, but they might still play an important part in the calculation of a more reliable stress value, we will focus on one of the most important factors that is always present, as these gears will always be rotating when they are being used. No gear would be stationary during service. This factor is the dynamic factor, Kv. Just like the marine factors that modify the endurance strength, generalizations of how these factors behave have been found experimentally. When gears are rotating at a high speed, noise is generated. The speed that matters is of course not the revolutions per minute or the angular velocity, since those don't mean much in terms of how fast the teeth are traveling. A tooth on a huge gear would be moving much faster than a tooth on a super small gear traveling at the same angular velocity or RPM. For this reason, we use the pitch line velocity that I mentioned in the previous video. This is just a linear velocity v instead of the angular velocity omega at the pitch circle line, which means v is equal to omega times the pitch radius. And that pitch radius is just the radius we use for every gear. If when testing the gears to failure, one of them fails with a tangential force of 200 pounds while being stationary, and another one where teeth are moving at a pitch line velocity v1 fails with a 100 pound force, then a kv factor equal to 2 would be designated to the pitch line velocity v1. Then another velocity v2 would be tested and the force at which it fails would be recorded. Taking these experimental measurements, we come up with kv factor expressions that again depend on the pitch line velocity and of course the machining process to manufacture the gear. There will be an equation for kv for cast profiles, cut or milled, hubbed or shaped, and shaved or ground. Important to note here is the fact that this pitch line velocity v is in feet per minute, which again, just like the units of the gear radius you use to find the tangential force when starting with the horsepower information, require you to use feet for the radius of a gear instead of the more sensical inches units. The expressions would of course have different coefficients for metric units, for all types of machining too. In this case, V is in meters per second, which again is slightly unusual since the gear diameters are commonly less than a meter and therefore measured in millimeters. Let's look at a situation where we'd like to calculate the maximum power that can be transmitted through a gear system if we want the bending stress of the teeth to not exceed the yield strength. A spur gear of diametral pitch 10 teeth per inch and 20 teeth with a face of 1.8 inches and a pressure angle of 20 degrees is connected to another spur gear to obtain a 3 to 1 reduction in rotation speed. They are made out of milled 1020 steel. We know that the pinion, that is the small gear driving the other gear, is rotating at 1200 rpm and we want to use a design factor of 2. I know that the power depends on the torque and the angular velocity. We cannot modify the angular velocity and we know that the torque is going to have a limit as it is directly proportional to the tangential force. If that tangential force is too high, then the bending stress at the teeth could potentially cause plastic deformation. We know that the angular velocity is 2 pi over 60 times the revs per minute. If the diametral pitch is number of teeth over diameter, then the diameter is 2 inches and the radius is 1 inch. The maximum tangential force that we could subject the teeth of our gear will be given by when the bending stress at the teeth equals or exceeds the maximum allowable stress. If the factor of safety or design factor is the strength over the stress, then the maximum allowable stress is the yield strength over the design factor. From this we know that the maximum tangential force that can go into the gear without causing plastic deformation is the WT that you can solve for from this equation. We know the face, the diametral pitch, the design factor, and we can look up the yield strength for 1020 steel. For a pressure angle of 20 degrees and a spur gear with 20 teeth, we find the Lewis form factor capital Y of 0 0.322. The last thing we would be missing would be the velocity factor KV.
which for milled profiles, like the gear in this problem, would be equal to 1200 plus V over 1200. The pitch line velocity would be found multiplying the angular velocity times the pitch radius. But I need this in feet per minute, remember? Not inches per second. By substituting this velocity value, we find a velocity factor of 1.524, which allows me to find a tangential force of 570 pounds. With a 570 pound force, a 1 inch radius or 1 twelfth of a foot, and an angular velocity of 40 pi, the maximum power I can transmit through that first gear without letting its teeth deform plastically is 5,969 feet pound per second, which if I divide by 550 gives me the power in horsepower. Now this is all based for gear 2, the first gear, but what if the teeth of the second gear deform plastically at a lower horsepower? So let's check each variable. The radius of gear 3 is 3 times the radius of gear 2. But we know that the angular velocity is 1 third, so the term r times omega is not going to change. For the tangential force, the face is still 1.8. The yield strength is still 30 ksi. The pitch line velocity is the same for both teeth, as they're both in contact as they move. The diametral pitch is the same, otherwise there would be interference between the gears. And the design factor is also 2. The only thing that would change here would be the Lewis form factor, as it is no longer that of a gear with 20 teeth, but a gear with 60 teeth. Looking up the Lewis form factor capital Y for a gear with 60 teeth, I would find a value of 0 0.422. This means that the tangential force that would cause the teeth of gear 3 to bend permanently would be 747 pounds, which means gear 3 can withstand higher forces and therefore transmit a higher power. But of course, at that point, gear 2 would be failing, since the maximum power that gear 2 can transmit is 10.85 horsepower. For this reason, the answer to the original question is the lower of the two. There's one more example where I use the velocity factor kV using metric units in one of the links of this video's description, so make sure to check that one out. In the next video, we'll talk about surface durability, specifically what we call pitting at the surface of the teeth of a gear. Thanks for watching.